sure a lot of fans want to know, and as, as to why, how did you guys come up with the mascot, Charlie? I think you actually did, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, there's a lot, there's a, it's a big overkill file, you yeah. know, when you go back through the things, people ask how'd you come up with the name, it's kind of blurry too. Uh, the first bat I drew on a piece of paper, and we made our own t-shirts, and we hung them up all over the basement, and we kind of did our stuff. And then uh, when we went to go do our first record, we gave our drawings to a artist, and then he kind of sketched out stuff. And then through the years, there's kind of been a million different variations of it that we've tried from on the cover of a new one. It's kind of a steel thing, and probably back from our maiden days, you know, wanting to have something like that. But it was hip. You had to have a mascot back then. Yeah. But I think I, yeah, I think I, I drew the first one, and then kind of just grew from there. I always remember that first bat is looking like Popeye. A little bit. Popeye's head with the little pointy ears. He's got to have a horn. And he's wings. He's going, this will be our mascot. I'm like, it's a fucking cocktail napkin. Would <laughs> <laughs> you join us in a bar at happy hour? Yeah. <laughs> so also what seems to be a theme throughout um, all your albums and all your promotional gear is the color green. So is there anything behind that? Is it just a favorite color? Is there any meaning behind it? Or? I remember it as being something that, uh, you know, everyone else was red. And yeah. we just wanted to have originality and identifiability, you know, and, I, and I, I think that that's one of the things that Overkill has always had. Uh, you know, when this music had started, for instance, back in the 80s, when we had picked green, uh, it really had come out of the West Coast Bay Area, and there was an identifiability to that sound, not necessarily to the individual bands, because there were, obviously you could pick them out if you're in the scene, but they were playing uh, a brand of music. And I think Overkill was doing something a little bit different at that time. We were a lot more meat and potatoes. We were sure we were a thrash band and we were fast. But if they all picked red, we were going the other way. And it was just really that simple that it was uh, uh, sure uh, to stand next to it, uh, to uh, be separate from the pack. Uh, that would give us our identity. And, uh, and we had that type of a thinking all the way back when the band was starting. So it's always been green based on that. Plus, well, we used to walk around in clubs you know, back in the old days, and you'd see those Twisted Sister shirts with that hot pink. You know, you'd see them everywhere, all over the place, and it was like, that's a good idea, you know, to have it pop like that. So, you know, obviously we weren't going to use pink. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we use green. It's kind of like Halloween, you know, yeah. so I think that's part of it. So, and what you said about the um, Bay Area trash team, so um, being from the East Coast around New Jersey, New York, do you think there was any... Um, there was like any rivalry between two different scenes, like between New Jersey, New York area, and the Bay Area on the West Coast? Not, not specifically, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, you know, I, I I was just talking, we had just done a meet and greet here with a bunch of people, and, and, and I remember meeting the guys in Exodus way back then, and still are close to them to this day. Um, I don't think there was a rivalry, but I think that one of the things that we had, or a principal Mars, was to be different than that. Uh, I suppose, you know, competition is a great thing, because competition kind of raises the stakes, and raises the level. We never go out, hey, we're one big happy family. We go out, regardless of our friendship, saying, I'm going to beat you into the ground. And that really, yeah. that really raises uh, the performance level, or inspires the recordings. Uh, but there was, I don't remember it as a rivalry. I, I always remember it as that sound being identifiable to that area. Uh, and the New York sound, or sounds being Many individual sounds. Uh, anthrax did not sound like Overkill, and Overkill did not sound like Carnivore, which became Typo, and Biohazard did not sound like any of them, uh, for instance, at that particular time, and that's what came out of that scene. So I, I kind of look at uh, the West Coast as kind of a, a, a local scene that went global, uh, but the New York scene is being global right from the start with yeah. regard to uh, individuality and identifiability. Definitely. Uh, so also, um, bands like Exodus and Testament, they've, you know, either reformed or like, you know, come back with the original lineup later on, but you guys have never stopped releasing, like I was saying before. Do you guys think that you get the credit that you deserve for that, for staying at it for so long? I don't, I, I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just kept doing that because um, it was fun. Yeah. I mean, we enjoyed the music. We liked the challenge of writing this stuff. Uh, that grunge scene came and went. We didn't care. Uh, bands reformed and they broke up. We still didn't care. It was just, uh, we loved playing. We loved writing the tunes. And it just, it was natural. It was organic kind of thing. We didn't, and the credit for it, I mean, you know, we're always kind of working hard and we take, uh, 
I get some kind of pride in that, then that we're always working hard, whatever it takes to get the job done, come play, whatever it takes, that kind of thing. But as far as just because we didn't break up and do that, I don't know if it makes any difference. You know, it, it's when I think of what he's saying, and, and I, I think to myself, we just talked about the differences in the scenes, and uh, the bands you had mentioned were from that other scene we had talked about. And we've always very much prided ourselves as being fucking New York guys. You're not telling us what to fucking do. We'll leave when we're ready. <laughs> and that's been a big part of our pride. And it's, uh, I think that there's a certain tenacity and staying power that comes with that. Uh, we started putting the pieces together even in the leanest of times as managing this band um, and understanding the business side of it. So I think it gave us a different point of view on it. But. With regard to credit, it doesn't matter because obviously legend is in the poster and that's the most important thing at this moment. Plus all those bands you mentioned, it's Testament, Exodus, Megadeth for a while, so all West Coast bands. This is true, this is true. Yeah. Anthrax and us have been at it. We stay around. <laughs> we'll leave when we're good and fucking ready. <laughs> Cockroaches. <laughs> you guys can supply me to be a boss. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> You guys have a, a lot of albums you discography. Do you go, is there one that sticks out as being your ultimate favorite? Or is that hard to say? Too many? I, you know what I can say? I can say that Overkill, um, and it, it's probably from some of the questions you've asked prior, has chapters. Um, and and I, I always think of the first chapters being the first four records. And then Horoscope really starts the second chapter of that. And then somewhere there was a third chapter that started with Dave Lynch joining this band. Um, I have a couple of favorite records in standout records. Years of Decay being something from the first chapter. Uh, from that second chapter, Horoscope, uh, Didi and I had done the writing just ourselves through that. There was no other songwriters that came in at that point. Uh, and in this last chapter, there's a bunch of standouts for me. Um, one of them being uh, from the underground and below, Killbox 13, was, I thought was a great record that we had done. Uh, I really like Ironbound, but it's really too new for me to, to say, where does it stand? And we're riding that wave of excitement by still touring it. So there's, um, you know, there's, it, it's, it's really about uh, a, a whole bunch of different chapters in the book that we're, we're actually still writing. Is there anything you want to say to your fans in Australia and around the world as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Welcome to New York. It was really good to be here. It's, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, 25 years later and actually getting to meet people that you have something in common with for all this fucking time and seeing those smiling Aussie faces at the shows and wrecking their necks. Uh, really fantastic situation. Glad to be in Australia. Hope you enjoyed it.